الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته uh, hello everyone my dear brothers and sisters um today is the 15th day of ramadan and because we have reached the halfway point of this blessed month half of it is gone and only half of it remains i felt compelled to reach out to all of you with a mid-month message a mid-month check-in a mid-month check-up obviously um this ramadan has been very different for all of us not having the masjid not having not just salat al-jumu'ah but some of the special gatherings that occur in Ramadan, like um, Salat al-Tarawih, you know, getting together and praying together at night, uh, the iftar dinners, uh, and some of the other opportunities that we get to meet, to socialize, to check in with each other, to check up on each other in Ramadan um, that we're not having because of the COVID-19 outbreak and how that has impacted our worship services. I, obviously this Ramadan, as we said, has been very different, but at the end of the day, it's still Ramadan. It's still the blessed month, the most blessed month of the year, and there are so many blessings to be had, even if the way that we're worshiping Allah in this Ramadan is a little bit different than what we're accustomed to. We have the Prophet saying about this blessed month of Ramadan, "Man sama Ramadan, iman wa hatisaba, ghufir lahu ma taqadba min dambi." Whoever fasted the month of Ramadan out of faith and seeking Allah's reward, all of his previous sins would be forgiven. He also said, "Man qama Ramadan." Whoever offered the night prayer in Ramadan out of faith and seeking Allah's reward. All of his previous sins will be forgiven. And he also said, Man qama laylatul qadr. Whoever stood in worship, spent the whole night worshiping Allah on the night of decree, laylatul qadr, all of his previous sins would be forgiven. And he also said, Walillahi utaqa'u min al-nar wa dhalika fi kulli layla. He also said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every night will liberate souls which potentially should be going to the hellfire, he will liberate those souls and enter them into paradise. Every night in Ramadan, some of us will be freed from potential punishment in the hellfire and sent off to paradise. And so these rewards are there to be had whether the masjids are open or the masjids. And so are we, we have to ask ourselves now at this midway point before the opportunity, the window of opportunity closes, are we seizing these opportunities are we making the most of the opportunity afforded to us to seize all of these khairat all of these benefits and blessings and and good deeds and opportunity to get allah's reward and his pleasure are we seizing all of that opportunity and amassing as much as we can in ramadan this is a good time for us to check in and check up on ourselves and make some serious introspection how are we doing are we doing enough can we be doing more and there are a few areas that we should look at. One area is the Quran. This is the month of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan al unzila fihi al-Qur'anu hudal nas The month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed as a guidance to mankind. This is the month of the Quran. And one thing that every Muslim should be keen to do in this month is complete the reading of the Quran from beginning to end. Are we on pace to do that? Today is day 15. Have we at least completed half of the Qur'an's recitation at this point? So there's a likelihood that we'll complete the reading in the coming 15 days or 14 days. If we haven't, then we need to step up our game. Because we shouldn't let the Qur'an, we shouldn't let the month of Ramadan come and go and we have not at least completed the reading of the Qur'an at least once. Another thing that we should look at is the night prayer. Are we praying the night prayer every night? Are we offering the prayer every night? As the Prophet said in the hadith, Man qama Ramadan iman wa ihtisaban ghufir lahu ma taqadum min dhanbi. Are we praying every night, seeking Allah's reward every night in Ramadan by praying? It, does, it doesn't mean you have to pray all night. 
But we should pray something every night. Even if it's only a few, a few raka'at, every night we should be praying to Allah, getting that reward, getting the potential of having all of our sins forgiven by being from the people who can look back on Ramadan and say we prayed every single night the night prayer in Ramadan. Even if it's only a few, as I said, a few raka'at. Another area that we should look at as we do this introspection is how are we doing in terms of al-jud wal-karam? How are we doing in terms of generosity and being open-handed? The Prophet ﷺ, as Ibn Abbas, he mentioned Sahih Bukhari, he said, Can Nabi nas? He said, The Prophet ﷺ was the most generous of people. And he was at his most generous. He was most open-handed in the month of Ramadan. And so this is the month where we should be as giving as we possibly can be. And there's so many good causes. There's so many Muslims around the world who need our help. Muslims in Syria. Muslims in Syria who some of them are suffering so badly that they have been forced to eat dogs and cats to survive. Muslims in El Yemen where there is famine and where there is a lack of food and other resources, medicine, etc. And so there's so many good causes that we can donate to. But also what I would like to remind the brothers and sisters here in our local community is not to forget about your local masjid. Do not forget about your local community. As you begin to look at different causes to donate to, to practice the generosity that comes hand in hand, part and parcel with Ramadan, do not forget about your local masjid. And please make it a point to also donate to your local masjid because the Prophet did say in the hadith, Ibda bi nafsik thumma man ta'ul. So basically begin with yourself. And then those who what? For whom you're responsible, your local community. The charity begins at home. And so our local community should not be forgotten in our efforts to be generous in this month of Ramadan. Another area that we should look at, brothers and sisters, as we make this introspection and we do this checkup and check in on ourselves, how are we doing, are we doing enough, is being thankful. There's just so much for us to be thankful for, brothers and sisters. Yes, we are, we've been denied or deprived of the masjid. Yes, the worship in this month is a little unorthodox. Ramadan just doesn't feel the same. But there's so much to be thankful for. We have our health. We have our families. Many of us uh, have, sufficient, have, have sufficient sustenance and food and drink where there are Muslims, not only in other parts of the world, but even in local communities here in America who are struggling because of the financial uh, repercussions of the COVID-19 outbreak. Some of them may be struggling to feed themselves and to feed their families. And we are not experiencing, most of us, if not all of us are not experiencing that. So we have so much to be thankful for. And the more we are thankful, the more these bounties will remain. And if we fail to give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we run the risk of having those bounties stripped of us, being deprived of them. As the famous saying goes, an-ni'am tadumu bil-shukr wa tazulu bil-kufr. That the bounties remain when we are grateful. But when we are ingrateful, the bounty, we're, we're deprived or the bounties are stripped from us. And last but not least, from the things that we should uh, do as part of our introspection at the middle of the month, brothers and sisters, is al muhasaba with tawbah That we should bring ourselves to account, look at ourselves, do a very close look at ourselves in terms of our behavior. And we should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our shortcomings. Look at yourself, brothers and sisters. Look at, let, let us look at ourselves. And look at how we behaved thus far in this month. Have we said things that we shouldn't have said? Used language that we shouldn't have used? Maybe have we spoken out of turn about another Muslim brother or Muslim sister? Something that would constitute slander or backbiting? These are all major sins and transgressions, which are not only sins outside of Ramadan, but they're especially sinful in Ramadan. And they have the potential of depreciating and sometimes... Um, totally um, destroying the reward we potentially get for our fast. As the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, مَن لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ وَالْجَهَلْ فَلَيْسِ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً أَنْ يَدَعْ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابًا That whoever does not abandon falsehood and lying in word and deed and, 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 and in ignorant behavior, then that person, Allah has no need that he should fast. And so what that means basically is that there's a potential that we will not be rewarded for our fasting if we do these types of things. So it's critical, brothers and sisters, at this halfway point that we start to check in on ourselves and check up on ourselves in terms of our deeds, our behavior. And we try to, try to rectify and make amends for things that we've said and done that may depreciate 
the reward or nullify the reward that we could potentially get for our fasting and our prayers and our du'a and dhikr. And in closing, brothers and sisters, um, I just want to say that I felt compelled. I want to say again that I felt compelled to give this message. Uh, I miss you all. Uh, I love you all for the sake of Allah. And I wish you and your families the best uh, in this month. And I pray for you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us all the tawfiq to be successful and to obtain the maximum amount of benefit and reward for this month. And in spite of the fact that it's different, it doesn't mean that the reward that we can obtain cannot be the same or even greater than if we had the masjid. So brothers and sisters, let us do that introspection. Let us apply ourselves in what remains of the month. And let us come out of the month being able to look back at it and saying, I did everything I could. I left it all out there. And inshallah ta'ala earn the rewards and all the blessings and virtues that come part and parcel with this blessed month. May Allah bless you and bless your houses and your spouses and bless the rest of your month of Ramadan. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak anibin Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sahbihi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.